King. One of the most notable fan favorites in the Owl How Wait. Is King a fan favorite? I like the guy, but I don't really see that much hype for him. Well, maybe I can help contribute. King is one of the most fascinating characters in the Owl House. Despite being a part of one of the show's main trios, Luce, Ida, and King, as opposed to Luce, Willow, and Gus, there's a lot we still don't know about this dog. We know that King claims to be the King of Demons. We know he has an oddly chipped horn and collar on his neck. We know that he loves his research and he loves his baked goods. But when it comes to who King is as a person and his origins, it's still a pretty big blank, which is odd considering how much screen time King has. I mean, come on. A lot of the B-plots in season one is dominated by him. He's clearly important. However, after the end of season one and Dana's most recent AMA, an explanation for who King is has made itself clear, and I doubt I was blowing too many minds with the title and thumbnail. I believe King is the last surviving Titan, and with all the information we have so far, alongside some visual details, I'm going to explain why. Of course, spoiler warning, if you are not caught up with the Owl House, please go catch up and then come back. But before we dive in, a quick message from our Patreon. We have some fantastic people supporting us over at Patreon, including Novin, who's been hard at work on their webcomic, XEA. We've discussed Novin's comic before. It's a sci-fi fantasy adventure with an overarching story. Imagine Ben 10 meets Steven Universe, tailored for an older audience. Axel, a boy gifted with extraordinary powers. Ton, a bug-like alien, and Vospark, a cyborg, all work for XEA and travel the galaxy to see what's out there to discover. Check out XEA on Novin's Patreon, Tumblr, and DeviantArt. Links to everything in the description. If you want to support the roundtable, get access to outlines, video plans, and sometimes even early access to videos themselves, you can check out our Patreon. Shoutouts are our $50 tier. Now back to the video. First off, let's go over everything we know about the Titans. Beyond the Boiling Isles lying on a giant Titan that Bellows claims he can communicate with and that the glyphs likely draw their magic from. So once more, let's consult the unauthorized guide to the Boiling Isles from Youngblood Old Souls. The Boiling Isles, named after the raging hot water of the Boiling Sea, are comprised of the bones of a fallen Titan. Throughout the ages, other monumental bones have been sighted in the Boiling Isles, raising the possibility that many such creatures stalked the demon realm in eons past. But, as yet, the Titan of the Boiling Isles remains the only complete skeleton known. Where did the Titans come from? How did they perish? I hope one day we can uncover these mysteries. Right off the bat, we know that the Titans date back eons, and that some way, somehow, they all went instinct due to unknown reasons. Even how they got to the demon realm remains a complete mystery, although I would believe they were always natural inhabitants, and perhaps they were just a rarity on that side of the demon realm that would become Bonesboro. Now pair all of this with the various teases from Dana's AMA. The Titans have been around for a very long time, so it's interesting that when a fan asked for the ages of Ida, Lilith, Gus, and Willow, we received either concrete ages or ballparks for Ida and Lilith, yet for King, Dana only responds by listing numerous question marks. Now, only that, but apparently we're going to learn the origin of King's Collar at some point in Season 2. That sticks out to me, because obviously collars are generally used for a pet's identification in the event they become a lost animal. However, this is the demon realm we're talking about, so let's think a little bit deeper. What other uses do we have for collars in the real world? Well, we know there's flea collars, meant to kill off any unwanted guests that invade our animal. While I'm not saying King has any magic fleas, I am saying that the demon realm, much like our world, can implement numerous features in one item. So, for example, a magic collar may not just be identification, but it could have magical properties that are meant to repress. Repress what exactly? Well, it could repress power. Considering King is super small, but Titans are supposed to be massive. However, it could also repress King's scent, and I am saying scent with the emphasis of quotation marks. What I mean is, the reason why King is able to wander the Boiling Isles, live a free day-to-day -day life, and go home to Edelin unscathed, aside from the fact no one in the Boiling Isles would recognize the Titan, is that King's collar prevents him from being recognized by external forces. Say, for example, Emperor Bellos, whose omnipresence allows him to see almost everywhere and anywhere. Although we don't know the extent of this ability, with the idea of King being a Titan, I'm surprised Bellos wouldn't have figured it out already. Hell, King is on Ida's wanted poster, so the idea of King's collar shielding him in some way wouldn't surprise me all too much. 
However, I spend way too much time on this point than I intended. Let's move on to King's Cracked Horn. When questioned about this detail, Dana simply remarks all will be revealed eventually. That ominous response definitely spells out backstory. But I point this out because I want to address the head of the Titan on the Boiling Isles. I believe the entire body being a skeleton throws us off, because if you actually look at his head, you'll see two uneven horns at the very top. Horns that are almost identical to King's. You know, just without the damage. But not only that, the entire skull looks like King's own skull, as opposed to a more humanoid skull. Not yet convinced? I don't blame you because I'm kind of all over the place. But that's when I break out the silver bullet. Now, concepts and premises in the series can vastly differ from where they begin in development. However, it doesn't necessarily mean that the core idea goes out the window. Sometimes ideas and concept art can evolve into bigger and better things, remaining a consistently vital plot point up until the very end. This piece of concept art for the series, which includes an array of creatures never before seen, ransacking the Owl House, the stained glass window shattered, as Luce and Ida are being prepared to be turned into a stew. All the while, a concerned king is being forced to watch as he sits in a chair or throne in horror. Notice that these creatures can share a lot of similarities with King. The horns and facial structure of the demon seasoning Ida, the yellow eye with a pink pupil of the demon that has their arm around King's chair, pointing and laughing at Luz and Ida as it means to convey this demon is all, look at them, isn't this great? Those two are gonna die, horribly, it's awesome. And probably the most damning piece of this concept art, slightly to the side of King, lies what's pretty much the ripped version of him. Horns, skull head, abs, and all. While while I don't believe this particular scenario is going to make its way into the series, I do think it paints a pretty clear picture. In this piece of art, King does have royal lineage. It appears a clan worships him, and it appears what could be his clan has finally found him after an unspecified amount of time, under the impression that Ida and Luce actually kidnapped him, as opposed to however Ida truly found him. And as consequence, they will now feast on Luce and Ida. So these could have been the prototypes of Titans, and somewhere along the way, the team decided to make them hulking giants, and sprinkling in the detail that they're all extinct. Still, it goes to show that Dana always had in mind that King's story has some truth to it. A truth that's a bit more muddled in the show. We don't know how much of his past King actually remembers. His recollection of events that caused him to be the King of Demons. But leading others is in his blood. He loves being a monarch. And although I am convinced that King is a Titan, I still don't think there's enough information to truly say, hey, this is exactly who he was prior to the events of the series. For example, there's a theory that he is a reincarnation of the gigantic Titan that became the Boiling Isles. However, I think it's possible that he could be the son of the Titan. That the Titan was slain when King was an infant, and King's memories of him ruling demons with an iron fist was actually him observing his father at work as a child. But once the Titans were slain, King was separated, found, and eventually hidden. However, it's also possible that King was a hulking Titan, who did have the title of King of Demons. But some way, somehow, whether it was a curse or spell, he was transformed and reduced into the size of a puppy. Ultimately, no matter how King is related to the gigantic Titan, I feel as if one thing is for sure. He is the key to exposing Emperor Bellos. The end of Youngblood Old Souls already told the audience that Bellos is lying in some capacity when it comes to his connection to the Titan, claiming that the Titan told him to spare Ida, when in reality, Luz got the upper hand and the gang was able to escape. Once we discover all of King's origins, I think a major plot point in the show will be figuring out a way to prove King's heritage to the rest of the Boiling Isles as a means to finally defeat and overthrow Bellos. And I'm sure these answers could come along as we figure out the origins of the Bat Queen, who is speculated to be the Titan's Palisman. And with King truly being the King of Demons, I can definitely see him being the rightful heir to the throne of the Boiling Isles. The series concluding with his marvelous reign, as he takes the throne, he takes the metaphorical crown and and probably an actual crown, and begin to untangle all of the wrongs that Bellows has brought to this world. But as always, these are my jumbled up thoughts, and I want to hear yours. What do you think? Could King be a Titan? 
If so, what's your precise theory on his relation to the Titans? Reincarnation? Lost child? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, or tweet your thoughts at RonTempleVids. And for more of my own thoughts, you can find me at AustricVods. We're also on Instagram. If you enjoyed this video, please sort of like and subscribe to the Roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have an awesome day. Austric Vox, signing out.